Hello there and welcome to the Spray Wash Academy. My name is Doug Gore. I'm one of the instructors here at the Spray Wash Academy and at Spray Wash Pro. And today we're going to talk to you about oxidation. We want you to, we want to talk about what is oxidation? How do you identify oxidation? Um, what can you do about oxidation? And is there any way to prevent oxidation? So we're going to cover some of those issues today. And this is more on the homeowner line. This is just to, to help you understand um, what it is that your contractor is talking to you about and what oxidation actually is. So let me start off. I'm going to give you the technical explanation of it, and then I'm going to give you my explanation, the factual explanation. Not that my factual explanation is better than the technical ex explanation, but let me just get into it and, and let's see if we can help you understand this. So technically speaking, oxidation, it's it's a process in which an electron is removed from a molecule during a chemical reaction. Uh, okay. Again, I don't like to talk about the, the technical side too much because I think you have to be a, uh, a chemist to understand the actual process of oxidation. So let me boil it to, down to you this way. And this is how I like to get to an understanding of what oxidation actually is. Now, imagine that you've got this red, delicious apple, right? It's this beautiful red, delicious apple. You shine it up, polish it. It's, you know, it's just got this nice shine to it. It's this beautiful apple, right? Now you take it and you split it in half and you lay it out. You have this beautiful apple sitting there. You set that apple down on the counter and you walk away for, say, five minutes or 10 minutes or maybe even 15 minutes, and it starts to turn brown. That is oxidation, or it's a form of oxidation. So what is oxidation? Oxidation really is kind of a, a, or it's caused by heat and oxygen. So on the exterior of your home, it's caused by the sunlight, which is the heat, and then the oxygen in the atmosphere. Those two together are what's causing oxidation on, on your home or on the different surfaces that you're dealing with. Now, again, there are several different types of oxidation. You've got the type of oxidation that is that red, delicious, beautiful apple, split it open and it turns brown. And it is a very quick process. Okay? So that makes me ask, well, how quickly does oxidation happen? Well, just like the red, delicious apple, it can happen very, very quickly. Or it can take years to happen. It can also be caused by certain products or processes that you're using. If you're cleaning the exterior of your home, the products that you're using, even if you get them from, you know, regular stores such as Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace Hardware, wherever you're getting it from, you really should follow those manufacturers directions because <clears throat> by because sometimes we sit there and we say, oh, if we just add a little bit more chemical, it's going to work better or faster, which can be true, but it can also cause damage and it can cause things like oxidation. So follow manufacturer's recommendations. Um, and then again, there are several different types. You've got the type like you would see on an apple. You would have the type of thing that you would see like on a car, an old car driving down the road that's fading and 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 getting that, that dull appearance to it. That can be a form of oxidation. And then on your home, the, the paint surface. Let me look at this. Have you ever looked at your garage door and maybe your garage door just looks chalky, looks different than it did before, okay? Maybe you've got a handprint on it from where somebody has touched the door or the kids were outside and they were shooting hoops and the, the ball hit the garage door and left a, a spot the size or, you know, the shape of that, of that ball. That's because it removed that top layer of paint, that top layer, that oxidation. And the, again, that's just getting to an understanding of what oxidation is. Okay. <clears throat> so again, you can see it on your house. You can see it on your Apple. You can see it on your car. You can see it um, in all different kinds of places. Another question that I've had before is what about rust? Is that oxidation? Well, it, it can be. It's a type, right? So the difference here is in in the oxidation that we're referring to, you're talking about heat and, and oxygen, right? Rust, you're talking about moisture and oxygen. Right? You don't you don't necessarily need the heat or want the heat for the rust to happen. 
Okay, so in Arizona, for example, it's a much drier climate, not much moisture in the air, so to speak, a lot of sunlight. You're going to have more oxidation issues than you'll have rust issues, where if you go to, say, Pennsylvania, you might have more rust issues than oxidation issues. And some of that rust in Pennsylvania is obviously going to be from them salting the roads in the, in the wintertime. I can tell you here in Louisiana, we get <clears throat> on the... Um, Sides of the home that have a lot of sun exposure, we get a lot of oxidation. On the sides that don't have much sun exposure, we get a lot of algae, mildew, and rust, depending on what's sitting on that side of the house. Okay, so that's where yes, it's a form of oxi of oxidation, but it's it's corrosion um, versus oxidation is kind of how I like to to look at that. Okay, <clears throat> um, so again, how do we identify? Corro or corrosion. Now I'm going the wrong direction. How do we identify oxidation? Well, one of the best ways to identify oxidation is the thumb test or the finger test. Okay. The first starting appearance of it is it kind of starts getting dull. Doesn't matter what the color is. Some colors are just more apparent than others. Like white doesn't show oxidation very well, but it still oxidizes. Um, things like the blues and the browns and the greens show oxidation easily. Okay, so if it starts to get this dull, chalky appearance, that's the first indication of oxidation. Secondly, if you just go up and you wipe your finger on it and that color comes off and it's kind of got that white chalky or that colored appearance to it, that's the oxidation that you've, that you've started to remove. Okay, so that's, that's the identification of of the oxidation on, on a home or even on, say, a metal roof. If your metal roof is starting to look chalky, <coughs> go up and just rub your thumb on it and see, does it come off? That's oxidation. <coughs> Excuse me. So oxidation can't in and of itself be fixed at all. Okay, Once something is oxidized, that the, the oxidized part of it is done. It's gone forever. Okay, You can't repair it. Now, you can restore the surface below the oxidation, you just can't restore the oxidation itself. <clears throat> the important thing to remember here is that when something is oxidized, you can remove that, that top layer of oxidation in most instances, but what you're left with underneath is an unknown. Okay, So if your contractor comes out and he removes the oxidation, <clears throat> but now you're noticing that the paint looks thinner, or that you can see through the paint, it doesn't mean that your contractor did anything wrong. He removed that, that oxidation, that top layer of, of paint. But this is also where I highly recommend a professional to do the job for you because you can get too aggressive. You can, you can take off more than just that surface oxidation and actually now start taking off the paint. So it's important to hire a professional to do the job for you. And not, I mean, I, I hate to say a fly-by-night company, but that's kind of where I'm going. Somebody with experience in oxidation removal to begin with. Now, oxidation, again, it, 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 it is, it, in and of itself, it can't be fixed. It can only be, you can only restore the surface underneath. And what happens to be underneath is not necessarily going to be known until the oxidation is removed. And sometimes, like if you use a, a hot soap and water to remove and you rinse it off and it all looks good, Oxidation will disappear a lot of times when it's wet. It looks like it's gone, but it's not. So sometimes you do an oxidation removal, soap and water, whatever, <clears throat> and then you come back after it's dried and you now you have splots all over the place. It just needs to be redone. So <clears throat> that, kind of going down that road, the, the, theoretically, just so that we understand, there's also no way to stop oxidation from happening. Okay, It's going to happen so long as you're uh, exposed to the heat and the oxygen. Okay, Let's go back to that red delicious apple. Right, If that red delicious apple sits on that tree, it's got the nutrients from the tree and it's this beautiful apple sitting there, it's never going to oxidize, right? Well, wrong. The reason is, is it's still the heat, the sunlight, the oxygen, all that are still attacking that, that apple, right? And eventually, if you just leave that apple sitting on the tree, it's going to rot. It's going to, to die. It's going to fall off. It's going to crack open. It's going to get critters in there, and then it's going to oxidize. So it's the same thing with any surface. So theoretically, no way to stop it, but you can restore it. <clears throat> okay. Can you paint over it? That's another question I get a lot. Well, 
Technically, yes, but technically, no. All right, again, going into that technical aspect of it, if you, if you have an oxidized surface, what did we say? How do you tell if it's oxidized? You run your finger on it, and if it comes off on your thumb, it's probably oxidized. If you paint over that, you're painting over the top of something that readily comes off. If it readily comes off, the paint's not adhering to the surface below. It's adhering to that oxidation, which is subject to coming apart quicker. Okay, <clears throat> might get a lot of painting contractors mad at me here, but and, and, and let me go this direction, too. There are a lot of different primers and things out there that help in that process to help break that bond and um, and, and help that paint adhere to that that surface that has been oxidized a little bit better. But nonetheless, it is still oxidized. OK, next thing is let's talk about cleaning it. How can we clean? How can we restore? How can we get rid of that oxidation? Well, there's really three different processes that you would use. Um, the first I don't recommend at all, and that's high pressure. The reason I don't recommend high pressure alone, because we're still going to, sometimes we'll use pressure to get rid of the oxidation, but not by itself, not as the lone process, okay? If I have to get close enough to something with high pressure to remove the oxidation, the likelihood of damaging that surface becomes very high, okay? For lack of a better word, the oxidation kind of has an electrostatic bond. It, it is attached to that surface, right? And so even though it's attached, it can readily come off. High pressure a lot of times won't remove it or will only remove the very top layer of it. You need some sort of something to break that, that electrostatic or chemical bond that it has to the surface. Now, something like just a warm soap and water and a rag, and you go around and you can clean it, and that can remove that bond that it has, and then you rinse it off, okay? I recommend going over it two or three times because it's probably, once it dries, you're going to see that you miss some areas, okay? So especially with warm soap and water, but it can work. The next thing is to use different chemicals that are out there. There are chemicals specifically designed to remove oxidation, and when you spray them on, if they're mixed incorrectly or if there's um, the circumstances are just right, you can remove more paint than you want to. And this is why I recommend using a professional that knows about the chemicals that he's using. OK, so this is where the pressure washing can come in. So sometimes you can apply these different chemicals and then pressure rinse them off. Notice I'm saying pressure rinse versus pressure wash. To me, there's a there's a big difference. A pressure wash is high pressure hitting that surface which can damage it. A pressure rinse is more of a high volume with more pressure, but not the pressure of a pressure wash, okay? So <clears throat> that is, th th those are the ways of removing or restoring the surface, okay? Now, once you've restored the surface, you've either used hot soapy water, rinsed it off, or you've used a chemical and you've rinsed it off or you've scrubbed it off with a, a brush, mind you, when you're doing oxidation removal, I do not recommend any type, any type of abrasive. Use a very mild brush, if you would. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I got one right here. Use this type of a brush, okay? <clears throat> you don't want to use something that is um, has really stiff br bristles to remove that oxidation. You want either a, a nice soft rag or a soft bristle brush, that sort of a thing if you're going to brush it. And again, try not to get too aggressive and go further than the oxidation to where now that you're removing the paint. All right, so um, the next thing I get questioned about, tiger stripes on rain gutters, those black streaks on rain gutters, is that oxidation? Well, it depends on who you talk to. There are a lot of people out there that will say that that is a form of oxidation. I don't agree with that. Um, and I'm going to get into tiger stripes in a completely different video, but I still want to address it here. The reason being is simply because that's a question that comes up. So tiger stripes are the black streaks that you see on rain gutters. And again, there will be a whole different video on, on that. That to me is not an oxidation because it's not being caused by what? It's not being caused by heat and oxygen. It's being caused by different elements. Again, explained in in the uh, in a video that I'll do specifically on tiger stripes. So that's not an oxidation per se. That is a, a an electrostatic bond again 
that involves dirt and grime and other things versus the, um, the oxidation, which is heat and oxygen causing that to happen. And that electrostatic or not, what is it? What was the technical? The electron is removed from a molecule kind of thing. The apple being split open and turning brown. Next thing I want to get into just very, very briefly is I really recommend hiring a professional to do a lot of these jobs. And if you're wondering where to find a professional, go to www.spraywashpro.com, www.spraywashpro.com, spraywashpro.com. And there, we're not exterior cleaners, okay? Um, the owners of Spray Wash Academy and Spray Wash Pro, Ray Burke and Doug Gore, we are, uh, we come from the exterior cleaning industry and we teach within the industry and we help you find good quality qualified contractors www.spraywashpro.com up in the right hand uh, side of the screen you will find a directory click on that directory enter your information right there not all your information all you have to do is put in uh, city and state and boom it'll pop up uh, spray wash professionals there in your area to help you find a pro in your area with the resources to get the job done correctly. I appreciate your time. This is Doug Gore again with the Spray Wash Academy and Spray Wash Pro. Appreciate y'all for listening. Take care of yourself.